Hello everyone. Today I would like to show you how to get started with unified observability for AWS in less than 10 minutes using Terraform. What you can get is a running Elastic Cloud Cluster that collects all your AWS data that also has an extended view on the dashboards for AWS. It has enabled all the relevant detection rules um, for AWS. And we also prepared integrations for cloud security and AWS monitoring, which is pretty important to get this up and running. On the other hand, we also configure all the necessary components in AWS, which includes the Elastic Serverless Forwarder, the EC2 instance that runs the Elastic Agent. We also enable the Cloud Trail log collection, as well as CloudWatch metrics and log groups data collection. And if you have enabled Security Hub, we will also collect the data from there. And with that, Let's start. So step one is to create an Elastic Cloud account via the AWS Marketplace. So let's do that. You just navigate to ela.st slash AWS, and then you are here in the AWS Marketplace and ready to subscribe for Elastic Cloud. So we click on continue to subscribe and set up the software. And now we are here in a short um, explanation of how to get Elastic Cloud up and running within the AWS Marketplace. So the only thing we need to do is to log in and create the vendor account and um, well, creating a new Elastic Cloud account. I will choose this account. And uh, choose a strong password. And now sign up. Account has successfully been created, so we can continue on the AWS Marketplace. We now linked our vendor account to the AWS Marketplace, and we see that there is a seven days trial up and running. Next thing we need to do is uh, next thing we can do. So optionally, we can use CloudFormation templates within AWS to make. Uh, the initial configuration that also includes Elastic Stack and Elastic Agent, but we will not do this approach as we want to do it with Terraform. So what we need to do is uh, to skip step three and go to step four and launch Elastic Cloud. We are launching this now and getting into uh, the Elastic Cloud portal. When we enter the Elastic Cloud portal, we may see this error message, which is expected because we skipped step number three. So what we want to do is to create an API key to create the cluster. Um, the way we do this is um, going to deployment features keys, and then we adding a new uh, API key by clicking on create API key. We give it a name, maybe Terraform, and then uh, the API key is created and we copy uh, the API key and keep it safe so that we can use it later in the Terraform configuration. Now that we have our Elastic Cloud API key, we can go to the second step, which is prepare the AWS account. In the AWS account, we want to create the security credentials that we need to access the AWS environment from Terraform. So let's do this by visiting the IAM management console in AWS, which is this one. And here we would like to go to the user that should be used to create all the configurations that Terraform is creating. In my case, I'm just using my own user and then um, clicking on security credentials. Here, I'm able to create a new access key and then uh, using this access key as a credential for my Terraform configuration. Be sure to keep the credentials safe so that uh, nobody else can use it except the Terraform uh, script that we want that we would like to run with this credentials. Now that we have everything prepared, we need to run the Terraform script. In order to do that, we start by using our Elastic Cloud API key and set it up as an environment variable within the uh, terminal that we want to use for the creation uh, via Terraform. In Windows, we use the Windows subsystem for Linux. And if you're already running in Linux, then you know how to create an environment variable. So it needs to look like something like this. So export EC uh, underscore API underscore key. And then you add your API key 
as a value to this environment variable. The second step is to download the Terraform template um, from this URL. So this is uh, this leads you to this GitHub project here, which includes all the Terraform examples for all the different cloud providers, including the one for AWS. As you can uh, read in the description, you need to go into multi-cloud and um, set it up uh, and start the setup from here. Uh, in order to download the code, you can um, choose to clone the GitHub repo, or you can just download the zip file and go on with that. And you have set it up you are when you have downloaded the code the terraform template code then you need to save the aws credentials in the local environment uh, config file uh, you do this by uh, creating a folder within multi-cloud uh, that is called local environment and then you create a file called aws.json and in aws.json you uh, create all the configurations and most important you add the AWS access key and the AWS secret key that you got from, uh, from your AWS setup that we made in step number two. And last but not least, you run in a Terraform and then finally um, applying the plan. So in a Terraform needs to be um, done first so that all the modules and uh, things get initialized. And after this is done, so this took only a few seconds, After this is done, you can run your uh, Terraform script, which is um, Terraform apply. And as you can see here, you find this also in the GitHub repository. And then um, you just start this. And when you do this, you will see in a second that everything will be installed within um, your AWS environment, as well as the cluster, uh, the Elastic Cloud cluster will be created in the uh, Elastic Cloud portal. Now that our Terraform script has finish, finished, yeah. the um, Elastic Cloud portal should look something like this. So we see that there is a new deployment here in the Elastic Search service, and we just click on the deployment name, which is AWS in my case, and we get into the freshly created cluster. And this is done. Um, the first thing we can do is uh, getting into the dashboard section that is uh, showing us all the uh, different dashboards that we have available. And in um, my case, we're directly switching into the uh, AWS overview dashboard that is summarizing all the data that we collected from AWS. What we can see here is that I've already collected for quite some time now. So it's a few hours later. And um, we see that uh, we have that we collect a couple of different data sources from AWS, uh, from Lambda or security findings and, and others. And just um, collecting everything in this single cluster across uh, accounts, across availability zones, um, across everything that AWS has as restrictions, of course, also across different regions. And Elastic allows us to filter down for every specific thing. So let's say we would like to uh, filter for a specific availability zone. The only thing we need to do is click on that. And then Elastic is adding a filter and filtering all the different results to the specific availability zone if this information is available. Well, as we can see here is uh, the collection of uh, active user roles and also a collection of possible risks. So those risks are the evaluation of the detection engine that Elastic uh, delivers out of the box. Other things we can see here are simple metrics uh, across our EC2 instances, EBS, uh, Lambda, SNS, SQS, and of course also cost analysis. Um, what we would do, but what I would like to show you is a more detailed view into a cloud trail. So for example, clicking here, we get into another dashboard that is just uh, visualizing the cloud trail data uh, a little more in depth. So for example, uh, again, um, how it is distributed across uh, different countries, across the different regions. Um, we see a couple of filters for specific uh, risks. So in this case, whether a security group has changed or whether we have unauthorized API calls, uh, it's just um, filtering out of the CloudTrail data and giving us a little insight into what is happening. You see there is a lot of information here and it's most likely very useful for you 
to also uh, have a look into that. Another thing um, that is that you might find useful is to have a deeper look into the VPC flow log. So you just click here and then uh, you get into the VPC flow log uh, summary dashboard that is uh, visualizing the VPC flow logs for you a little more in depth. Um, like you can see. Uh, so we get an overview about all the uh, acceptance part and on the right hand side, we uh, see a couple of um, visualizations for the rejected packages and other information which IP addresses are, belong to that. And again, uh, an overview about possible um, threats or other other things that might hurt your system across the world and also across subnets. So a, a lot of different information, again, that you can have a look into uh, to get a better overview about your AWS system. And with that, I hope uh, you liked the getting started experience. And uh, I also hope that you have find the time to look deeper into the Elastic Stack for AWS and I want to say thank you and goodbye.